Hello everybody, Robert Dempster here. So to follow on from Jason's video where we've imported a, a model and we've started to pose the model and put some clothing on it and change the um, attributes of the model, we're going to go into rendering and adding some lighting onto our DAS 3D model. So we're going to select the Genesis 8 Starter Essentials and I'm going to double click on the 8 basic female again this is on the smart content we can double click that here and we can go ahead and add things like the hair or the wardrobe but you can also install other um, parts of hair and wardrobes when you select this install option so if you go to all products and you scroll down here there are a bunch of other products that you can download for free and that's going to have a lot of um, materials wardrobes hairs you might want to add to your model so I've downloaded a few so I'm going to go to the content library it doesn't seem to download to the smart content it's on the content library and here under products and C I've got this charm hair and I'm going to use this for now you can use anything you want if you don't want to download anything then you can go to the smart content and then use one of these or you might not want to add the hair so I'm going to go to content library I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to double click on the charm hair and it's not currently supported for the Genesis 8 female model so I'm going to select unsupported and then select the Genesis model and then select what it currently is so it's hair and it's the shoulder length hair and then click accept and then that should there we go map to our model so I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see the details on the face okay so this is currently on our uh, texture shaded you can set it to smooth shaded uh, to speed up the software if you need to for now it's going to keep it on texture shaded and to change the material type I'm going to right click and then select the charm hair and then double click on one of these materials so there we go so I'm now going to go back onto the smart content and I'm going to add a pose so I'm going to go over to poses and I'll just double click on one of these poses and just undo there just make sure that the hair isn't selected let's try just selecting the Genesis 8 female and now we're in that pose and um, now does 3d can be a little bit temperamental see there where it said that it didn't work uh, you sometimes need to select the Genesis 8 female sometimes you can deselect and it will do the same thing uh, it can be a little bit buggy, so you've got to bear with it. Uh, when in doubt, just select the Genesis 8 female. If anything, let's say the hair isn't mapping to the model, then you may need to uh, make sure, if I just go over to the uh, charm hair here, you might need to make sure that it is actually mapping. So the collision item is currently set to Genesis 8 female. And if it isn't, it might be mapping to something else. And that means that it's not going to track where our model is. Uh, you can also change some of the parameters of the hair if you wanted to. You could go into the transformations and you can, you know, play around with these scales. For now, it's going to keep it the way it is. And uh, yeah, see here we can we can change all of the the settings here if you want to. So you can actually move the hair. It's very cool. Uh, in fact, can I just see where we? that's the back that's the back 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 uh, there we go so we can bring that forward and that's a bit better okay so I'm just going to zoom in I'm going to zoom in again and I'm just going to move the head up slightly so you can just select on the head and I've just moved that up it's a really cool tool because it's going to move the rest of the body with it okay and we're currently set to the perspective view I'm just going to go over to the uh, wardrobe and we can see if I double click here it's going to map onto our model now if it hasn't mapped properly then again we might need to select uh, where we let's select the item and then let's just make sure that it is mapping to our model uh, where we so you see the sports bra was mapped to the hair so it's off so you need to fit to charm hair and i'm going to select the genesis 8 female click accept 
and now it's going to map to our model and same thing for the shorts basic wear shorts select general and we're going to go down to fit two there we go charm hair it needs to be genesis 8 female now sometimes it maps automatically in this case it hasn't if it hasn't then yeah you need to actually make sure it is selected on uh, the right setting and then again we can make all these little iterations here if you need to uh, you know change the sizing so it's not clipping through for now this is perfectly fine just for demonstration purposes I'll continue from here so yeah we're on the perspective view and I'm gonna add a camera so we can add a camera up here in this little option and then I can name my camera if I want to I'm just gonna keep it as default and press accept so now we're in the camera view so perspective view select camera and this is what my camera is now seeing so I'm going to get it into a view that I want to be uh, stationary so this is what my camera is going to be looking at and then I can go back to my perspective view and then this is the camera that I'm going to use to just move around the model okay so now let's start adding some lighting I'm going to go over to the render settings and if you select environment this is the current environment that's being lit for this model and I'm going to go over and hopefully this doesn't crash the system whilst I'm recording I'm going to go to the Nvidia iRay and it might take a while for this to load but it's going to have a very high quality render of our model I'm just going to switch back to that camera view just so you can see those details there you can see there's a lot more detail than just the standard textured view so this is the view that we're going to use for our final render to be exported into Photoshop so I'm going to go back to that perspective view so I can see the entire model and over here we've got some settings it's currently set to dome and scene and if I just turn on the dome we can see that there is a HDR background and you can play around with that you can change the intensity make it lighter uh, you can change the orientation of the background so it's going to flip that but you can see that if I just go back to that camera view the lighting is very flat if this is the results you want then that's okay but usually you want to have a more of a dynamic lighting so we're going to use two different lights here we're going to use the directional light, or sorry the distance light and we're also going to use a point light okay so I'm going to change this from the dome and scene and I just want the scene view only so we can see it's already made it a lot darker it's not going to use that HDRI anymore and we're going to play around with some of these settings so I'm just going to make sure I've got my camera set to where I want it, it should be okay I'm going to switch this back to perspective view right so I'm not going to play around with these settings for now I'm going to create a new light so I'm going to go up here and select the distance light click accept and then I'm going to move this light out and up here we've got the option to move and then this one is rotate so I'm going to rotate that and I might just move it up slightly So we currently can't see the effect that it's having on this model. So we need to increase the light. So I'm going to go onto that distant light. And I'm going to scroll all the way down. In fact, you can select lights just to make it a bit more neater. And here where it says luminous flux, so the lumen counts, I'm going to increase this. So let's do maybe five zeros. Um, for now, let's test maybe six zeros. Okay, so we've got a bit more light there. And I'm going to experiment with this lighting. So I'm just rotating this. And I might just move it back a little bit. So our light is predominantly behind our model. And then again, I can rotate it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
So our light is just underneath our model. Let me just bring it down just a little bit just so we can see a little bit of light there. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's our first distance light. But we can't see any kind of bounce light that's coming up here because that light is just going all the way down off into the distance through the grid into infinity. So we need to add some sort of base uh, to the bottom of our character. So up here where it says create a new primitive, I can select that and I'm going to keep it on the plane and we'll do size, I think default is one by one. I've got the default set to three by three so we can pr press accept. And now we can see that we've got a lot of bounce light coming up here now. So I'm going to turn down the light slightly so we can play around with, let me maybe just do something like that. And you can just increase this as you go. Just keep turning up that slider. That's looking okay. Maybe just a little bit darker. So this is just our main light. This is, this is essentially our fill light, just to fill in the scene. And then we're going to add a point light. Okay. So accept. So just this little icon here. That's going to add our point light. And we're going to go back into our move and move this up. Like so. And again, let's just increase the lumens for this, make it a bit brighter. So I'm going to increase this. One, two, three, four, maybe. And we can change the color. So we can maybe change this to, in fact, we can change the temperature. Could drop this down to almost like candlelight. 2500. That's looking pretty cool. So I can just bring this up. And ideally, I just want to light that side of the face. If I just show you some scenes from films, you usually have your camera placed away from the lighting. So the shadow side is the side that faces the camera. If I just show you some examples from some films. Here we've got um, Oh Brother Art Thou. I forgot the name of the film. <laughs> we can see here that the lighting is to the side of the face and the face that's pointed towards the camera is in shade. Okay, we've got another example here. It's a lot more muted, but again, the camera is predominantly on this side. We are seeing the shaded part of the face. The other side that's pointing away from the camera is lit up. Yeah, and you see this an awful lot in films. Go watch a film and uh, see how many times you can see this effect. Here you can use the uh, lighting just to highlight something that you want it, the viewer to look at. So in this case, it's his mad eyes that you want to see within the scene. And uh, we've also got a really nice color contrast going on here from the desaturated greens and, you know, very cool to this very stark, you know, pink lights. It's very interesting. Here again here, we've got it in the shade. We've got nice blue light in the background just to offset the yellow of the light on the face. And we've just got a little bit of room lighting here. Very soft, orange, warm light. In this case, the camera's right in front of you, but it's almost like he's being kind of uncovered in this in this case. Uh, we've got a little bit of rim lighting going on here, highlighting the character. And again, we've got those two contrasting colors between the warm and the cool. Here, we've got a very nice soft focus here. Everything's almost in silhouette, and it's just highlighted the edge here. Very nicely lit. And again here we've got some contrasting colors here we've got the greens and then we've got these like neon purples and again just contrasting that face there very interesting shots so we want to do something similar here we want that camera to be pointing towards the shade so i've just added that point light and you can experiment where you place this light but ideally you want that light away from the camera So that's looking quite cool. 
I'm going to go back to my point light here and then I'm going to go to my distant light. And I'm going to change the color. So in this case, I might make it predominantly very cool. Okay, so you can change the temperature, but you can also go on to the color here. And let's just select a blue color and click OK. That might be a little bit too much. I'm just going to drop that down a little bit. Okay, so now we've got these contrasting colors. We've got the warm light and we've got our cool light in the shade. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now, it is falling off a little bit too much into shade here. And if you go back to our um, go back to our lights, in fact, I might go back to our surfaces and select my plane. And we're going to change that base color and just make it a 50% a gray there, just so it's not bouncing up as much light. That's a bit better. So you can see it's just a little bit darker now. I'm now going to go back to my light panel and I'm going to select my distant light and I might just increase the lumens just a little bit just so it's a little bit brighter. Okay, that's a bit better. And I'm now going to go over to my cameras. So I'm going to have to scroll down here to get to cameras. Select cameras. Uh, there we go. So select the editor. By default, it keeps going to presets to actually edit our options here. We need to go into editor and I'm going to select my headlamp, which is on auto at the moment. If I turn it on, then it's just going to light up the scene, but it's lit up too much of the scene now. So we need to drop it back down. So we've got the contrast between the distance light and this headlamp, which is connected directly to the camera. So you can imagine that your camera actually has a giant LED light on it, which is lighting up the scene. Uh, with that on, you usually have it set to off when you create a camera. So you've got full flexibility with what you're doing with your lights in the scene. But for now, I'm going to turn it on and I'm just going to turn that intensity down. So if I put this on zero, then that's without it. And then you can just slowly start to increase this number. So let's see. 1.2. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay. You can go up even higher if you want to see a little bit more detail in the face, but ideally I want to try and keep it uh, just a little bit more in shade on that side. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So now that we've lit our model, we can start to render our model. So in the render settings here, if I go over to general, it's currently set to the active viewport. You may want to change this to something uh, similar to what you're going to render this with in Photoshop. So I could set this to 16 by nine widescreen. And that's automatically going to crop to that view there. And then I can change the pixel size if I want to. So currently set to very low. Let's set this to 2000 pixels. As soon as I click away from it, it's going to make it uniform to the height. So I've just changed the width and added a two in front to make it over 2000 pixels. And then we can change the image path. So I've just got this set to the desktop currently. And then I just go ahead and select this little camera icon. And that's going to render the scene. So it can take a while. But it does render as a PNG, which is really good because you're not going to have anything in the background interfering with your model. And I've just noticed here there's a little bit of light here and that's coming from the distance light. So you can play around with this and you can move that distance light away and you can change the angle of it and, uh, you know, get that perfect lighting set up. So, yeah, that pretty much concludes it for this lesson. So you've now got a model in the scene. You can add some different um, different clothing if you've installed it. You can now add some lights, experiment with that, do your render, and then we can go ahead and put this into Photoshop and start painting into it. Okay, that's all for now, folks. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.